Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Conversations with John Dow. I am your host, John Dow. This show, as always, being made possible by L.J. Brown Entertainment in conjunction with Ray Graham Productions. As always, the object of this show is to bring you the movers and shakers in the areas of entertainment, the arts and sciences, finances, politics, community activists, in other words, people that are making things happen right where you are. And on that note, I'm going to introduce my guest for the evening, certified financial planner, Gary Wood. Hey, John. Good to be with you. Good to thank. Glad you're here. And uh, 37 years in the financial uh, area. What's, what's that like? What does a certified financial planner do? Well, John, we work with folks and uh, individuals, families, uh, Christian ministry, uh, small businesses. Uh, the question we get quite often is, uh, it boils down to how much is enough? Uh, folks want to know, they have certain God-given goals and they want to know how they're doing relative to those goals. So we look at uh, various financial disciplines, it, it's estate planning, tax planning, investment programming, insurance programming, education planning, retirement planning, and all of those have a financial component. And what we're looking for is the, the areas where those uh, various uh, areas of need can be coordinated so that we help folks save taxes and get to their goals more efficiently. You are with BDC Capital Management, is that correct? Yes, sir. And mm -hmm. how long have you been with them? Well, uh, we started this firm in 1990, and uh, God has sustained us through some very uh, interesting financial times. Uh, but uh, we've been in business since our 24th year, and uh, prior to that, uh, I worked in the banking industry for seven years and then uh, worked with uh, the largest financial planning firm in America for another seven years, and then we were led to start this firm. And uh, like I said, we've been in business since 1990. 1990, mm -hmm. uh, the economy wasn't exactly humming along, no. so that was a big risk. No, it was, and yeah. uh, it's it's exciting uh, to to uh, see God's faithfulness in all, in all of that. Uh, yeah, we were about to have Desert Storm, and. Uh, uh, a lot of things were happening. We had a uh, pretty severe recession in the uh, mid-90s. Uh, we had the the go-go tech boom in the 1998 and 99, the late 90s, and then you had uh, concerns about Y2K in 2000, and then the 9-11 uh, disaster. So a lot of things have happened. The, most recently, the the significant uh, recession in 2008 and 9. So yes. uh, we've seen a lot of things develop. We've seen, we've seen families really, uh, in in terms of weathering those those types of storms. Uh, there's a, a a greater fear factor in the marketplace now as a result of that, and people are asking, I think I think I think some very good questions, some appropriate questions for the the, the day that we're in, and we're just grateful to be able to uh, to. Uh, be of service to those folks and to help them sort out their questions and come to some solutions that are appropriate for their families at this time. You almost led me to my next question. What are some of the things going on right now that are affecting families that uh, you and your cohorts see? Well, the big concern that we have is, is uh, family debt, our, our government's debt, and really what that, all that means. Uh, if, if we're in debt quite often, that means that we're, we're not saving, and that's true for families. It's also true for governments. Uh, right now, collectively, we're $12 trillion in debt as families in America. Now, you contrast that with the early 1950s, that, that number was zero or close to it. Now we're at $12 trillion in debt in our families. Over a trillion of that is, is student loans, which is the fastest non-mortgage uh, area of indebtedness. And so that concerns me about uh, you know, new family formation, about the, the hardships that, that young couples will face as they, as they uh, look to, to uh, uh, obtain housing and uh, to provide for their children. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big albatross to go into uh, a marriage with. So we're concerned about that along with debt in general. Zero debt in 1950? Yeah. What, what happened? Well, you know, we come through uh, a severe depression. We'd gone through World War II and 
people were just conditioned to, to not be into debt because they, they'd gone through a, a protracted period in our, in our history where uh, the fallout from that debt, everybody saw it. And they were, they were very, it was top of mind awareness in terms of the negative implications of debt. And my concern is that we're going to face another situation like, I mean, debt, debt has to be reconciled at some point in time. We don't go through life and, and not have the, the implications of, of uh, misspending uh, not have its impact. So again, that'll affect families, it, it'll affect governments. And so what I believe we need to be doing, uh, especially within the body of Christ, is to uh, address our, our debt issues our, in, in the context of a comprehensive financial plan. And that uh, there's just so much in scripture that, that addresses financial questions. And uh, you know, as a, as a practitioner, John, like you said, 37 years, uh, I've found that the, the precepts in the Bible are the ones that you can hang your hat on and that uh, they work in any economy. And so we're, we're excited again to be a part of that and to, to share that with, uh, again, families, uh, pastors in leadership positions, uh, you know, to, to, to walk the walk and walk the talk. Uh, really, I mean, the demands of, of ministry, really any job, but ministry in particular, uh, you know, you're, you're answering to so many folks in, in, in your congregation. We, we also have to embrace the mandate to provide for our families. And so we're excited to be a part of that in a small way. Talk to us about debt and planning. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, too much debt kind of prevents you from planning. But the good news is everybody's somewhere. And we're not all in the same place, but uh, the principles are the same. Uh, that you, you can't be a saver if, if debt is taking up more of your budget. And uh, so uh, in terms of our monthly spending, there has to be more income than outgo. And uh, so we do the things that uh, are necessary in order to get uh, families so that their, their cash flow is positive and then they're positioned to save to meet their financial goals. And uh, that's a very positive experience. You know, debt is a very negative experience. It, it really weighs on you and uh, brings you down. It, it causes family stress. Uh, Debt is the number one cause of divorce in our country. You know, over 60% of divorces are caused by debt strife. And, uh, you know, families breaking down is, is uh, number one cause of, of, of children, you know, growing up without uh, dads and, and, and delinquencies and so forth like that. So the, the, how we handle debt has significant impl implications for our, our family's well-being, and then how we're passing on uh, good habits uh, to our children and to their children. Uh, very important stuff. Uh, you talked about the planning part in the family. Let's uh -huh. say someone makes $150,000. One, one spouse makes 150, the other one makes 75 or 80. Either way, good income coming in. Very good. Is it hard to get them to not live off of that 150 and not go out and spend, 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 or do you think they can say, well, wait a minute, I make 150, but I want to plan it out so that I'm not living paycheck to paycheck, or if I have, let's say, an additional rental property, that that rental property is positive income, or mm -hmm. if I want to invest, do I do true investment or do I speculate? Okay. Well, by definition, speculation is not an investment. Uh, but uh, regardless of, of what your income level is, what you want to do is to, is to uh, write down uh, your budget and your obligations and put into, put into your budget the things that you don't get a monthly bill for, things like retirement. And uh, uh, if, if, if you have margins, uh, education of children, those things you don't get a bill for, but it's good to ask the question, okay, how much is enough in this area of our family's financial goals and what do we need to be saving now in order to meet those in a, in a timely fashion? Uh, and the, the big benefit is, is doing that when you're young. You know, if, if you're a young couple and you're getting married and the first thing you do is go out and buy uh, a big house and, 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 a, and a big car, well, you're, you're locking in some consequences for many, many years. So it's always great as a, as a young couple, especially, to get premarital financial counseling and then to start out as a couple and going forward uh, to, to be financially disciplined and uh, 
Life is a lot more peaceful that way. So you have to have a plan. It's good Absolutely. to have a plan starting out. Yeah, Absolutely. And like I said, I mean, uh, a financial plan, tax planning, investment programming, uh, uh, how, how can we save in a way that's tax efficient? That's a big question. Uh, and, and for couples, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's more than just uh, following the advice of, of uh, whoever your best friend is. You know, your situation is unique. You're knowing what your marginal federal tax bracket is. So you'll know, based on whatever that rate is, if you save, for example, into your company's pre-tax 401k plan, then you're saving the taxes at whatever that rate is. Now, you know, if you're a couple and your taxable income is $74,000 or less, then that rate is either 10 or 15 percent federal and about another net of 5 percent Virginia. So if you're putting money at that rate into your 401k, you're deferring taxes that will re result for uh, in it costing you only 80 cents to save a dollar. The, the 20 cents difference is how much you saved in taxes right now. Now if the employer happens to be matching that, then sometimes you see formulas where they're matching 50 cents on the dollar up to 6 percent. Well, there's another guideline in, in that, in that uh, you want to be saving, you know you want to be saving 6% regardless of your tax bracket. So that you're, you know, when you put that 6%, you're going to get 3%. That's a 50% return on your money right away that you would have missed. So you definitely want to do that. Uh, but beyond that, the tax bracket comes back into the, into the picture. Once you've, once you've maximized the employer match, okay, now how do I save? Should I put it in an IRA? Should I put more money in the 401k? How about the Roth IRA? Now that's that is a winning concept for so many people that uh, if you're in a 15 to 15 percent bracket, the Roth IRA, you don't get that deduction on the front end. But unlike the 401k where you pay taxes on everything on the back end when you take it out, ideally in retirement, the Roth IRA, you, you don't get the tax deduction on the contribution, but everything it grows to over the rest of your working life is tax-free buildup. And when you take it out, it's all tax-free. So. Uh, what we, if we were to start out with a young couple, we'd say, okay, some mixture of pre-tax savings and after-tax savings is a good combination. So when you get to retirement, you have a, two pools. One's an after-tax pool, one's a pre-tax pool. You can draw from both and not drive your taxes up so much in retirement. Staying on that realm, uh -huh. it sounds like it's just a good financial plan, but I know when I came out of college, I knew about it, but I did not go to a financial planner right away. I, I did not go until I took a $10,000 pay cut from my second job and this investment guy says to me, well, come on back and see me when you get that job making $30,000 mm -hmm. a year. And I'm like, hmm, so maybe it does take money to make money, but what is a good solid financial plan, not only for the young couple, but for just someone starting out? What, if they go and sit down and talk with someone, what should they ask and what are some of the things they should be expecting to hear from a good a, a person that's going to give them a solid financial plan? Well, the basis of a financial plan, again, is a sound budget. And you're beyond that, uh, eliminate or minimize from the start or then ultimately eliminate consumer or non-mortgage debt. Those are good components of a financial plan. Uh, going beyond that, you want to start saving so that you, you don't have to go into debt in the future. Okay. And, you, and you save you know, on a short-term basis you want to create an emergency fund so that if something happens with your car or something happens with the home appliance, you're not having to go into debt in order to replace those or, re or repair those, those uh, uh, things that you need. Uh, home repair, things like that. So you start an emer emergency fund or a cash reserve fund and usually that's three to six months worth of expenses. Whatever, the, whatever it goes back to the budget, but whatever those expenses are, your, your initial objective is three to six months worth over time. And then in, in the longer term savings or investing realm, then we get back to savings for retirement or education. And there again, we talk about the 401k, we talk about the Roth IRA, we talk about uh, regular after-tax investing where you're, you're uh, outside of those plans, you, you can also have individual investment accounts. Uh, so uh, all of those are components of a sound financial plan and knowing, really quantifying for, for uh, both of the uh, of spouses there that you, hey, you know what the plan is, you're working the plan, and uh, you know that to, you, you reevaluate the plan, say annually, to see how you're doing, to to evaluate your progress. All of those things uh, come in, you know, come into play when you're talking about sound financial planning. 
most people don't like to hear the word budget, <laughs> but I, I do believe that if you don't, ha if you can have, a, you have a hundred thousand dollars, fifty thousand, one million, yeah. if you don't have a plan for it, pretty soon it's going to be gone. Now we all say, all right, well I'm going to pay off my house, pay off my car, pay off my student loans, give mother, daddy, brother, sister, mm -hmm. my best friend some money. And after you do all of that, you still have this money left. You, it sounds like to me you still have to have a budget, a plan on how yeah. each dollar is going to be accounted for. Yeah, it's, it's just good discipline. Uh, you know, uh, in the medical profession, my wife is, is a nurse by training. And you, when you go into the, to the doctor's offices for tests or the hospital for tests, they talk about baselines. They do tests for baselines so they'll, they'll know what, where things are when they're running right. And where they, you know, when things get out of a kilter, you go back to that baseline and say, well, what was the test when everything was running right? And a budget's kind of like that. But uh, having counseled so many people approaching retirement now in retirement, if, you're, if you've uh, accepted the discipline of budgeting, when you approach the retirement goal and you come into a, a, a professional like, like us and say, okay, can I retire now? My company has just laid me off or my company's just closed down or I've got this retirement package. Can I afford to do this? Well, I want to know what your baseline is on your budget, because we're going to we're going to measure the accumulated savings and pensions and so forth against what the what the income need has been historically, and it's 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 so wonderful to be able to share with folks. Hey, you're going to be okay. You know, God has provided. You've been disciplined along the way, and here's here's the reward. You don't have to stress out about this. Uh, you're you you know we get the the joy of saying you know you you're there and. Stress is not something that you really have to be dealing with right now because there's, there's a lot of other things you're dealing with at that time, but you don't want to be coming up short at that moment in time when, when your retirement has come three or four years earlier than you were really planning on it, on it, on it uh, coming about. I'm here with uh, Gary Wood of BDC Capital Management, 37 years in the business. A lot of people say, or they ask the question, what should I do first, plan for my retirement, or educate my children, mm -hmm. or how do I do both? Again, if both can be done. Both can be done, and uh, what we do is to look at both goals side by side and see if you can afford to do both. Based on where you are right now, it's always, okay, this is where we are right now. And uh, you know, a lot of folks make the, the mistake, I believe, of funding retirement, because, I mean, for funding education first. And uh, because, again, we don't get a bill for either one of these. But because education comes first, we fund it first, and then we say, well, on the back side, we're going to uh, catch up on retirement. Well, you know, you miss the, the benefit of starting young for a long-term goal in case of retirement, but it could be that you couldn't afford to do the education in the first place. And that's where oh. you, you should have said, no, we can't do this, and to make a family decision and say, you know, have an honest conversation, an age-appropriate conversation with your children about, okay, mom and dad can afford to do this part towards your, your, your college. Now, the rest is going to be up to you. And uh, that's great because you can say, okay, your part is to work part-time. Your part is definitely to get great grades and position yourself for, for scholarships and things like that. But you're having a, a, a practical conversation with your children about the family's plan. You know, um, we've seen we've seen parents do it the other way: fund education and with a with a with a blank check. You know, you know, go into an out-of-state school in some cases, and then really not have enough in retirement. And it's very seldom that I that I run into a child of a mature financial age that would not come back to the parents and said, you know, I wish you'd taken care of yourself. You know, I, I, I wish you hadn't done that. I mean, they they the children want what's best for their parents at the end of the day. And it would been great to have those conversations in real time with all of the facts in front of you. And that's really uh, where one of the great benefits of working with a financial professional that can help you quantify those goals and then prioritize them. Uh, you know, the Bible says uh, we should leave an inheritance for our children. How does that come into play and where does the financial planning tie in with that? You know, it's, it talks about leaving a uh, an inheritance for your children's children. And uh, so really a strict wording of that, I, I think uh, parents, we need to value as parents uh, the, the, the spiritual legacy that we're build, building in our children and to value that over the financial legacy. 
and to not sacrifice the spiritual legacy for the financial, what the financial legacy may be at some point in time. Um, but for grandchildren, uh, I think it's, it's neat as, as, a, as a remembrance from their grandparents to, to leave them an inheritance that can pass to them at, again, at a, at a, okay. a financially mature age. Okay. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave most 18-year-olds a lump sum distribution from a will, but uh, hmm. there are ways to do that where they come into it at a, at a financially mature time to where they can remember, this is a part of the remembrance of their grandparents who may not be there any longer, and uh, it's, it's just an I love you. Uh, that uh, uh, can just uh, another way of saying I love you to, to your grandchildren. But again, for, for your children, don't sacrifice the spiritual, the relational part for the financial. The, the former are much more important. I heard so, I read somewhere a while back that one of the things parents can do, or maybe even grandparents, instead of leaving the little ones a lump sum. You set it aside, and mm -hmm. so when they reach that age, if they have shown maturity, it's for them. But if not, they don't get it. Because if I'm headed down the wrong path, when I get of age where I can get that money, I'm just going to go down that wrong path bigger, better, faster. But if the money is still in my parents' or grandparents' name with the understanding that if I'm headed down the right path, then the money is there for me as opposed to, okay, we're going to leave it to John and you know when he gets 18 he can just do what he wants to do with it. There are several ways to do that and it depends on what kind of control that the parents or grandparents want over those funds in situations where again the ultimate financial maturity of the child is yet to be known. And it goes back to planning. Right. Yeah. And here again the Roth IRA can be a great vehicle for that. Uh, you can set up a, a, a Roth IRA based on your earnings and make the child the beneficiary. Uh, so there's a way that you can, you can, you know, they can inherit that at your life expectancy. On the other hand, you, you know, you're retaining control. I mean, because you can take it out tax-free, you can, you can, you can withdraw it yourself with no tax consequences and give it to them at a date that you determine down the road. Mm, okay. So it's a way to have a, a, a savings concept do double duty. It, it's, it's primarily a retirement vehicle, but it, it can be repurposed for other things if you don't okay. need it for retirement. That's good. Gary, talk to us briefly about the special program and a special place in your heart you have for our pastors. Well, pastors are dads and, and, uh, and husbands, and uh, we, we all have the charge in Scripture to provide for our families. But at the same time, pastors are ministering to the, the broader church family. So we're privileged to help pastors with uh, those uh, questions about how much is enough in terms of retirement planning and, and questions like that. But the, the important okay. tax issues that affect pastors pretty uniquely and to, to make sure that uh, while they're ministering that they're also serving as good providers for their family. And again, how can we reach you? Well, call us toll free. It's 1-877-685-1007 or visit us on the web. It's www.bdccapitalmanagement.com. Folks, for Gary Wood, I am John Dow. Until next time, this has been Conversations with John Dow, brought to you by L.J. Brown Entertainment in conjunction with Ray Graham Productions. Until next time, folks, this has been Conversations with John Dow.